Okay, so let me just put some gloves on. Okay, so I'm going to pull the lie into this and stick blend to a light trace. And you won't be able to see, so I'm going to cut it out because I'm working with my bigger pot today. Okay, now my essential oil blend is going to go in. And this is called Cold Pillow because when my nephew Ethan was a little boy, he always wanted a cool pillow with him, like a cold, and he called it his cold pillow. So this goes back a long time when he was a little boy. I thought well, that's a nice name for a soap and people totally get the meaning and the scent of the essential oils is really cooling. So this, it's just lovely. This is like one of my favourites. I love this blend. Because that vetiver with the lavender is just really, really good. And then the geranium's in there just to balance it a little bit. But it's really, you can really smell the vetiver, even though you don't need to use very much. I think it's about 15% of the blend. And that's all you need when you use oils like vetiver. It's such a strong, strong smell. Good job you don't need much either, because it's about, what did I pay? I bought like a little 50 ml bottle and I think it's something like 30 quid. It's not cheap. So luckily I only needed a smidge in this batch so I don't have to up the price of the soap, you know. Okay, give me my pot. So we're going to start with the... Where's my jug? Okay, we're going to be working in layers so I want my jug. I'm going to pour off the first layer and add the clay to this first bit. So all of the clay that I will be using in this gradient batch will be all going into this. That's how you do your gradient. I did one the other day with black sands, which is here. Hopefully you can see that okay. It's like a, a gradient of like a black mica I use with this one. I normally would use charcoal, but I wanted not to have too much grittiness in there, so I used a mica instead. So this is Australian olive green clay, and it's quite a dark colour, so I'm going to put two scoops in there. That's pretty much all we need to get the colour. And it'll add a little bit of slip and glide to the soap, so I'm going to stick blend that in, you'll see the colour change. majority of this will go into the base, or will be the base, put that back in there. So here's my mould, I'll bring you in so you can see it go in there. Okay, okay so let's just get most of this in. But not all of it because we need the rest of that for our grading. And now I've forgotten I haven't got a scoop, so I'm gonna have to go and get a scoop. <laughs> Just so I can layer it. Hang on a sec. Okay. Luckily this stays fluid because I've been faffing about for a minute. Okay, so for the next layer we just go back in, add the next bit, and it will get lighter and lighter as we go. <laughs> I'm sure that you've all seen this a thousand times before with other soap makers. Lots of people do this technique and it's a good, uh, good simple one to learn. Okay, now I'm just going to stick blending again. Just Now we will start to layer it on. So bear in mind this is still pretty loose underneath so I've got to go really careful so that I don't break through to the other side. <laughs> break out to the other side. Was that the doors? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? The doors. Never really into the doors. 
Apart from People Are Strange, when the Lost Boys came out, I like that. <laughs> I was never really a, a Doors fan as such, really. I liked and still do love Zeppelin bands like that. Um, so being into Zeppelin, you'd think I would like the Doors, but I'm just, I'm not, not like, I don't think they're crap, like, I, you know. I get it, I was just never one to really listen to them very much. Like Sabbath, and bands like that. In fact, Tony Iommi lives in the next village over from us. <laughs> I won't say where, because you might want that kept a secret, but yeah, he lives in a very popular little village near like it was just like five miles away and you see him on the street sometimes with his dog <laughs> in fact the other week we went up there i had to go and buy something and he was on the high street and my sister was like who's that i know him and i couldn't remember the name and i had to um text matt and ask him who it was, and I was like, oh yeah. And I told my sister, she said, I bloody knew his face. I kept thinking, who is that? And he looked right at me that day, and he, I sort of, he sort of looked at me like I was gonna go over and like bother him. Like, he was smiling, he's a smiley person, but I didn't go and bother him. I was like, I just sort of looked and thought, yeah, I know who you are, and I don't, but I can't, it's not coming to mind, you know? Yeah. The Cotswolds is an area where lots of stars buy homes and it's just a few miles away from us on the hills. Beautiful area, but very, very expensive to live there, of course, because it's right in the heart of, well, it's the Cotswolds, that's where they start. So if you search Cotswolds UK, you'll see all the little pretty villages. It's beautiful, but People like you and I <laughs> can't afford to live there. Well, maybe some of you could, but I certainly couldn't. Not at the moment. I do have a dream. <laughs> maybe one day I might get the house in the countryside, you know? Oh, shoot. Just clean that up because I can't stand spillages while I'm working. I just can't stand it. Look at it. So, let me just stick blend that again. So as you can see with this blend, there's time to work with it. You don't have to rush around trying to get it in the mould quickly like you've seen me doing many other videos where I've had a soap that accelerates on me. That happens a lot to me, as you know. Well, has happened a lot to me. It isn't so much unless I'm using a new fragrance on camera, you know. Okay, so we're getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So it's Friday again. Do you like to make videos on a Friday? I seem to just uh, always come to a Friday and think, oh, I'll film a video. It's like if I've not done one on a Monday, it's generally going to be on a Friday when things are quietening down a bit. And I just shut shop and think, oh, sod it, it doesn't matter. We can make videos today. Because like I said before, there's not a mass of footfall where I am. So I'm not really bothered about the shop being open because half the time nobody comes in in the afternoons. If I get customers, it's usually in the mornings, if at all. And I've got my regulars that come and usually message me and say when they're coming and that's all good. But yeah, it's uh, YouTube videos. I like doing them and it's another form of income for me. So it just helps to, bet, to pay for stuff. So like the ads that I, I have on here, they're not like I don't make masses and masses of money. But the more videos I make, the more money I make. But it's not like, you know, it's not going to 
pay for me to do too much other than buy equipment and things like that so I just sort of put it towards things that I need for the business to film with really that's that's basically it so it's a nice little uh, extra bit of income that I get from this but certainly not very much but it will be if I keep going I might do quite well <laughs> you never know it might one day set the world on fire <laughs> right so next bit you can just see that I'm just gonna see I do look at these stars, you know, on YouTube, like um, Shane Dawson and Jeffrey Star, and I follow their social blades so I can see what they earn, and this is ridiculous. For those who haven't had, had a look at Social Blade, you really should have a look if you're interested to see what YouTubers actually earn from ads, like, you know, the top earners. It's, it's millions. <laughs> I think Jeffrey Star's is two or three million dollars a year. From his AdSense and that's just AdSense that's like not anything else that he does that's just AdSense on his videos on YouTube I mean it's just nutty money isn't it absolute crazy 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 money and yeah there's probably more people that earn more than that I don't know about Shane Dawson I can't remember what his earnings were but it's just colossal colossal amounts of money but, I mean, look at the shitstorm that's been going on with all of those guys recently. Like James Charles and Tati and you just, oh lordy, I don't, I don't want to be entertained in that way. I just find it ridiculous, you know. What the hell are they all doing? I just find it so weird. But then, that's a... Uh, what becoming really big on YouTube probably does to you. I just, you know, well, not to everybody because you look at Jenna Marbles and she's totally in her own little happy world with her doggies and I like, I like watching her. But there's some out there that I just, what the hell? What are they even thinking, you know? of this into there and then I'm going to do the white bit, the white portion. Of, I'm going to use some uh, cappuccino, this is a cappuccino mica from Mica Mama. I'm just going to sprinkle the top there, it's, sort of, it's, it's not as dark as I wanted this to be this mica on the picture on the website it looks a lot darker and I wanted it like a you know like a bronzy brown I was looking for and I used to get one from Nurture but I didn't want to order from the States because I thought oh, I'll just get it in my own country because Mica Mom is great and I really like their products and I've used You Make It Up, Minimal Makeup Ingredients I think one of those two actually has got the bronze I was looking for but I thought I'll try this cappuccino because it looked really dark but it's not actually that dark. It's all right, but it's not as dark as it looks on the website. Okay, okay that'll do. When we come to cut, remember there'll be all speckledy bits down the sides and that's just the mica. And when we cut it, I always trim off my edges of my soap so you won't see it. So let's just pop that to the side a second and get the white in here. I just want a little smidge of that. Just want to whiten that bit for the top. On this mess, it's terrible. Just gonna wipe, get all wipes a minute. Okay, so that's still pretty fluid underneath, so I'm gonna use my scoop again. Mm. 
and then we'll have to wait till this sets up before I can do anything with like texturing the top on it or anything like that because it's still quite fluid. So this evening Matt goes skateboarding and he's riding vert at the moment, he's learning how to ride vert. So Jodie, if you're watching, <laughs> which I'm sure you are, tell Phil that Matt's doing vert <laughs> and he's bought himself a helmet the last time he went, thank God, because they were all having a go at him. He's never really, um, well he has ridden vert before, but not like, not anything like he's learning at the moment. So he's getting really, really into it. And uh, there's a little team that gets together on a Friday night in Birmingham and they go to the skate park and they sometimes have the whole place to themselves because it's like old blokes night apparently. <laughs> so um, they're all sort of, 40s and 50s they're all in their 40s and 50s and they all have a fantastic time together and a good laugh and it's really like really good for Matt's end of week activities so I stay home because I've got the dog but tonight it's um I've got two dogs because I've got my own dog and I've got my nephew's dog she's called Loki and she's staying with me for the night like Matt will be back about 11 o'clock tonight he, he goes up and then he, he comes back he spends about four hours skateboarding and then comes home but Birmingham's about an hour's drive so they, they finish at 10 and then he gets back about 11 so we've got my nephew's dog she's like a whippet cross so her and Bridie are the best of friends at, but when they get together they are a nightmare it's like two best buddies getting together and causing absolute havoc so that's what I've got to put up with tonight, so you can think of me. I'll tell you all about it in the morning when I come back to cut this, if I do. Or tomorrow afternoon, I expect it will be. Because I shall have to spend some time with my nephew in the morning for his birthday. His birthday today, but they're going out tonight and I didn't want to go to Birmingham myself. They're going out, like my nephew's going to Birmingham as well. They're going to watch a Mexican band. They're going out for food, but they weren't going to get back till like two o'clock in the morning. I thought, no, I don't really want to do that. So I'll look after your dog while you go. So that's all good. So I'll be doing my usual Friday night stuff and just watching the TV. And go and walk those two doggies in the countryside. That'll be nice. That's what I prefer to do. I like to get and go and reconnect with nature. <laughs> Rather than going out and uh, being a bit wild, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave this for a few minutes and come back before I texture the top, so. Whew, God, it's hot. In a few magic moments, I'll be back. Okay, I'm just about ready to texture. So, I'm just going to do my usual peaks, which means that I'm going to pick up some of that mica from underneath. I did this the other day when I made the black sand soap and it, I quite like the effect rather than just trying to keep this these peaks like on the very top. I actually like bringing a bit of that mica up through because it gives a nice effect when you cut it. Normally I'd put lavender on the top but I haven't got any because I smashed a jar full of it on the floor and obviously couldn't keep it anymore. There was all glass in it and everything so I thought I'd better just chuck the whole lot away and I'll go and buy some more because where I've just been talking about in Broadway there's a, um, a lavender farm so I can just go and buy it again. So here's what I'm talking about with the top you see you get like a that's what I did with the last one, so that's what this should look like. It's just parts need lifting up a bit more. Come on. Come on, peaks. It's a little bit soft still. I don't want to mess too much, otherwise we'll lose 
it will start merging and going a dirty colour. I don't like that when people start messing with soap too much. You know, I hardly watch any soap making anymore on YouTube. I used to watch a lot, but I just don't watch much anymore. I watch Ophelia's Soapery. I like her because she just does quick videos where you can just see her quickly making stuff, and I really like her soaps. They're beautiful. Um, who else do I watch? Uh, I think that's about it, you know. I'll catch her every now and again. I catch Holly every now and again. But I haven't watched as much as I used to in a long, long time. I just think, um, I just got watch, into watching other stuff and it's like soap making, soap making, you know? Like, ugh, I don't know. I probably should watch a few more, but it's not like it was years ago. There was lots and lots of people doing it and now there's not so many on YouTube. And I don't know, it's just not the same. <laughs> anyway, that's Cold Pillow. And I'll be back to make the next one. The next one I'm going to make is 4 and 20 blackbirds. I'm just going to quickly check and make sure I've not made it before because if I have I'll do something else but I'm just going to check so I'll be back for the cut of this one. See ya! Okay, it's time to cut cold pillow. So here's the batch that we made and it's now Monday, so I didn't come in at the weekend at all. I was going to, and then I, it just didn't happen. So I'm coming in today to just cut this and do a few more things. Um, there's a busy weekend. So I had the dog, like I said. And I'm just trying to remember where I was at on Friday. <laughs> so yeah, we had the dog Friday night. Matt went skateboarding and I stayed home and the dogs I went and took them out for a really nice walk in the countryside and picked some flowers just connected with nature a little bit you know and took my sister's dog so Tracy left a little dog behind she's like a Patterdale cross and She's that one little piece of my sister that we got left, you know, and she's got actually a very, very funny personality. She's a very funny little dog. Um, but just very, very loving little dog. So it, she loves fuss. She loves to go for country walks. She is wild. She's another wild little dog. She's a typical Patterdale cross. She's like really into, gets herself into mischief. It's like my sister in dog form. That's what she's like. So, her name's Makushla, which is Irish for my darling, I think. That's if my memory serves. I think that's what it is. I'm, if I've got any Irish watchers on here, then you can let me know, but I think that's, that's what it means. So, Makushla. He traced his dog before that. It was called McLeod. And when we went through all of her things in her flat to clear out the flat there were McLeod's teeth, his puppy teeth. <laughs> McLeod was a pit bull cross with an Alsatian so he was a big dog but with a very kind heart. He was a lovely lovely dog but he was very naughty and um but anyway, my sister adored him and she kept his teeth all these years. So it was one of the things, like, you know, when people say, oh, what do you want of the deceased person? I was just like, oh, you know, I don't know. I felt like a bit of a vulture, really, having anything. But when the teeth came up, I was like, I love the teeth. <laughs> and it really made me laugh. But, like, they mean more to me than anything, those little teeth. It's funny, isn't it? So on Tracy's funeral day... I wore a little mojo bag that I made for myself. A little, I've got this little red leather bag that I bought. Um, I can't remember where I got it from, but a number of years ago I bought this bag to just put little um, healing stones and little bits and pieces in it. So on the day of the funeral I made like a courage bag and in the courage bag I put McLeod's teeth. And the people at the funeral were laughing, like there's lots of our friends there. And I said, I've got my cloud's teeth around my neck. And um, whenever I'm feeling low or not full of courage, 
I take his teeth out and have another look at them because he was a very strong dog and um, yeah I just thought that was a really nice thing to for her to have kept and we've got Bridie's like puppy teeth, Matt saved them and put those away so it's just like a nice part of something to have with you so I've kept his teeth on my little dressing table and every now and again I look at them and it just makes me laugh and it's just a, a really nice thing to have and I wasn't shocked that she kept them all those years it was just a really nice thing that she she did you know and now they're mine <laughs> and I know she wouldn't mind <laughs> so I've got my cloud's teeth um, so what else did we do oh yeah Saturday was a very 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 hot day this is what this soap looks like I'll leave pics at the end so a little bit further out than usual um, so yeah it was very hot on Saturday like really humid very sunny and just hot so I made a den in the garden for the dogs and I just got some chairs and I pegged a blanket over the chairs so they got some shade and then I ended up getting in there myself <laughs> so I did that for the afternoon and then Saturday late sort of well it wasn't even late afternoon it was early evening we had to go and do the pottery till so we went over there and normally we'll go and do the pottery um <laughs> if you can hear my dog in the background she's with me this morning <laughs> moaning um yeah normally we'll do the pottery about four o'clock in the afternoon but we left it to about eight o'clock at night and it was just bliss over there it's literally like listening to a symphony it's so full of wildlife and when we got there the birds were just going nuts and I said to Matt my god listen and he's like I know isn't it amazing and it's just beautiful and that, that beautiful evening glow that you get you know they call it the golden hour well there was light coming into the pottery and it was just like just beautiful I posted a picture on my Instagram of some pots in the uh, little pottery shop there with the light coming through the window it's just absolutely beautiful so that was a nice day and then yesterday was Sunday so we got up and our friend came round, one of my skate, old skateboarding friends that we've known for years, he's called Jamie, so he came round and we went to Siren Sester, which is a, another town about 20 odd miles away, part of the Cotswolds, so we went there because they've got a skateboard shop and there's a really good skateboard shop called Decimal there, so we went there, I wanted to get some new shoes but I didn't find any. And Matt wanted a new skateboard, so Matt got his skateboard, I didn't get any shoes, I didn't even buy a t-shirt, which is unlike me, I'd normally go and buy something, but just didn't see anything I wanted. But opposite the skateboard shop is a crystal shop, and I thought, ah, what are the chances? <laughs> so I ended up in the crystal shop buying candles and, like, coloured candles for spell work, and I bought some... How many did I buy? Three. I bought a geode, a blue agate geode. Then I bought a blue lace agate stone because something about that was calling to me and I thought I need to have a piece of that. And then I bought a piece of Amazonite which is really, really good for healing and for psychic ability and um, something on there that just resonated with me on the on the notes that the late the, whoever was selling it in the shop they made notes on each stone and what they, what each stone was good for and I can't quite remember what it was if I remember or I can find the info I'll put it in the down in the description down below so you can have a look but yeah Amazonite is a beautiful like duck egg blue color stone and I just bought myself a little piece of that. And then I bought some incense sticks, like I always do. <laughs> and that was that. So I spent about 30 quid in the crystal shop. And I think Matt got his skateboard. He buys like really wide skateboards because he's now skating vert. He's um, kind of changed what he's riding. So he bought a new, what was the company? I don't know, company who's done a, collaboration with Kodak so he's got um, 
Oh God, I can't remember. I think it's a Rick Howard board anyway. If anybody's into skateboarding, you know who I'm talking about. So he's bought himself a Kodak collaboration board. And we came away with stickers and things like that, as you always do in the skateboard shops. <laughs> and that was about it. So that's it for the weekend. And now it's Monday and I've got lots and lots of things I need to do today. And then I think we're going to go... I'm going to go for a walk with Natalie later, my other older sister. So we're going to have a walk. So that's that. So I shall leave pictures at the end. Oh, hang on, there's a little bit to just cut for samples. The good thing about these original moulds that I've got, you get tons of samples out of the end pieces, which is great because I run out. You know, I know it's hard to believe, but I actually do run out of samples every now and again. And I have to make up stuff like uh, little perfume samples and things like that if I've run out of soap. Anywho, so I will leave pictures of this lovely cold pillow soap at the end for you and then I'll be back for the making and the cutting of 4 and 20 blackbirds. So I've got that one to cut next and do another video for. So I will yeah, leave pics at the end and I'll see you for the next video. See ya!